It is a fact, a somewhat unfortunate fact, that nonlinear differential equations are usually impossible to solve. They're just really difficult. Let's recall something that we did in a previous example. Do you remember this one? We looked at the equation dx dt equals minus sine of x, and it was really hard to solve. I mean, so what? Who cares? Oh no, this is kind of an important equation. This equation shows up in coupled oscillators, where you've got a couple of things spinning or rotating or doing the same thing over and over, and they're coupled together. Why is that important? Well, that shows up in oh, a whole bunch of contexts, everything from robotics and locomotion to mathematical biology and how things move. It's really kind of a cool differential equation, but it's totally difficult to solve, even though it looks simple. We can separate it, no problem there, but then you got to integrate cosecant. That's hard. But let's assume that we know the answer. We're still not done because there's a lot of algebra left to solve for x as a function of t. The thing that we want, we can't get. So both the integration and the algebra make life difficult for nonlinear ODEs. So what are we going to do? I've got an idea. Let's give up. Let's just give up. Let's give up trying to get an exact quantitative answer, something in the form x equals this explicit function of t. We're going to work a little bit more qualitatively. What do I mean by that? Let's think. Our differential equation, dx dt equals minus sine of x. What is that actually telling us? dx dt, the derivative, is the rate of change of x with respect to change in t. That means... If the derivative is equal to minus sine of x, then x has to be increasing if sine of x is negative. And x has to be decreasing if sine of x is positive. We got that minus sign out there. Don't forget about that part, right? This is just what a derivative is. It tells a rate of change. We could say when the solution is increasing, when the solution is decreasing. No problem. Hey, wait a minute. I cover the case when sine of x is negative. I cover the case when sine of x is positive. What happens when it's zero? Oh, this is interesting. Let's consider what happens when we start off at the value x equals zero. What is dx dt evaluated at zero? It is minus sine of x. Plug in x equals zero. Sine of zero is zero. That's it. x of t is zero. And if you start there, the derivative is zero. So you got to stay there. This is very interesting. We now have one explicit solution to the equation by thinking through things qualitatively. This is a solution. It starts at zero. It remains there fixed for all time. It's not a very interesting solution. Oh, but it's a very important solution. This is an example of a type of solution we're going to look at a little bit later called an equilibrium. So what about that? Well, let's take a look. Let's draw some pictures. Let's graph the solutions x as a function of t. Now I know that x of t equals zero is the solution. That one I know explicitly. I'm going to draw some other solutions in here that I don't know the explicit equations for, but Trust me, these are accurate curves, and what we see is exactly what we expected to see, thinking through things qualitatively. That when x is positive, we've got sine of x is positive, dx dt is minus that. That means that x is decreasing as a function of time. And likewise, when x is negative, it starts off below zero, because sine of x is negative, throw a minus sign in there. dx dt is positive. That means that x is increasing as a function of time. And what you can observe, either through qualitative reasoning or through looking at the pictures, is that it seems like all these solutions are converging to zero. They are converging to this equilibrium. That's very interesting. Oh, but wait a minute. There's more going on here than just this, right? We're looking at a local picture of what happens near zero. If we zoom out a bit, 
then we start seeing why this differential equation is so difficult to solve in general, why it's so interesting. That's because there's more than one place where sine of x is equal to zero. There are lots of places where sine of x equals zero. And if we start there, we stay there because the derivative vanishes. These are all equilibria, but their behaviors are very different. We see some of these equilibria, solutions are converging to them. Others, it seems as though they're rushing away, they're pushing it, they're repelling nearby solutions. These two different behaviors, these two different types of equilibria are going to be central to the story that we're going to tell in this chapter.